Mike's hanging out with the Calgary Police uh, K-9 unit people today and their pooches. And we had a question, Mike, that we were talking yeah. about earlier. Are all police service dogs German Shepherds? Great question, because I was wondering the exact same thing. I looked around and I said, oh yeah, they're, they're all German Shepherds. Not the case. In fact, most of them are Belgian Malinois. And actually, Marco right here uh, is a Belgian Malinois. That's Sergeant Jim Gourley joining me now. Uh, a lot of people, obviously, they, they think that it's... Uh, they don't think about Malinois when they think about service dogs. No, um, you know, the, traditionally it's been the German Shepherd. Yeah. And, uh, and we do have uh, a little more than uh, half our dogs right now are German Shepherds. Um, this is a Belgian Malinois. Um, he's, uh, he's a new recruit to the Calgary Police Service. We find the drives in both the Belgian Malinois and the German Shepherds uh, are, are a perfect combination for what we're looking for in police work, especially here in Calgary. Now, you said he's a new recruit. I mean, literally, you've had him for four days, yeah, five? Absolutely. Yeah. So a uh, colleague and I, we, uh, we went down to the United States and we actually tested a number of different dogs. And uh, Marco and, uh, and one other dog were fortunate enough to make the grade for, uh, for his testing. And uh, we're going to begin training with him this week. Now, one of the first things you do is create that bond. You bet. Yeah, so that would be the first thing. We, we're going to pair him up with a handler with a, a great personality similar to Marco's, and we're going to work on that bond. Okay. And that's and that's key in any partnership. So we'll uh, we'll have the handler and Marco go for some nice long walks together. And as you can see, he, he's watching the other dogs here having a good time out on the training field. They're very alert. They're Absolutely. constantly just looking and, and listening. Absolutely, and that's what we're looking for in the dog. We uh, we want a dog that is raring to go, uh, is absolutely as high drive and a number of different capacities. But um, so once you establish the bond, what's the next step then when it comes to training to be a service dog? Yeah, we start with the, the fundamentals. So just the basic stuff. As you can see behind me here, see uh, Sergeant McNutt with uh, young Ringo. Ringo's been in training for about two months, and that's just uh, our obedience. So uh, here he is at a heel. And we're just going to start with that, um, uh, the, the foundations of the heels, the sits, the stays, and the downs. And we want that dog and the handler to essentially be one. Whatever Sergeant McNutt tells that dog to do eventually, we want that dog to have full trust in the handler to know that whatever my uh, master is asking me to do, I'll do it f uh, willingly and without any issues at all. Now, almost out of time here, but I want to mention uh, they're always on the left hand. The dogs are on the left hand of the handler. Why, why is that? Well, you know, primarily most, uh, most police officers are right-handed. Um, and our service weapons usually on our right side and if we need to have access to that quickly um, uh, that's what's what you know the main reason why we actually have the dogs on the, on the left hand side internationally that's what any sport dog or usually on the left hand right. side as well it's a bit of a standard wow. and Ted Joel uh, the sergeant here is also telling me about uh, when they're walking and the left leg they look they watch the left leg so when that left leg stops the dog knows to stop and it will not move again until the constable moves that left leg it's quite fascinating actually they are very alert. I'm looking forward to the bite training. Yes, and I like the fact that Mike Yanni is going to be part of that. He will, an active part of that.